Welcome to the Perfect Life Awakening Show, hosted by Royce Morales. Royce has been a transformational facilitator, teaching groundbreaking, spiritually-based courses for more than four decades. She is the author of three books about her teachings. Join Royce as she takes you on a journey into how to live your best life and find your true purpose through discovering the origins of subconscious, disempowering notions, and releasing them. She talks with experts and inspiring people just like you who learned to trust their intuitive inner wisdom, which led to life-changing shifts. Today, her guests live an empowered existence and are helping change the world to a higher consciousness place based on truth and love. You deserve to awaken to, align with, and embody your true self and live a life filled with love. Transform yourself from triggered to empowered and create your perfect life. Here is your host, Royce Morales. Hello, welcome to my show. I am so excited to be here today um, chatting with an amazing creative person with my co-host Jackie Stratton. And we are just going to talk about creativity and how trauma gets in the way of creativity and all kinds of interesting things. But before we get started, I want to mention that even though we're talking about creativity, I personally feel as though we're talking about getting in touch with our true purpose, tapping into what we are supposed to be doing here, envisioning it, knowing it, taking action, and really trusting the process. And even if you believe you have no creativity, you do. And I'm sure that Andrew is going to talk about that because he was one that said, I don't have a creative bone in my body. <laughs> so, and me being a, a an art major and an, my entire life, I was an artist. I owned a gallery. I understand a lot about creativity and a lot about the fears that it brings up and the unworthiness to do it and how can I compete with all these great artists and all these beliefs that we have about creativity and we'll, we'll talk about and hopefully our discussion today will inspire some of you to trust your creative process tr trust the journey and to know that like I said we all have creativity even if it's just you know what am I going to do with my hair today or what should I wear or how should I arrange the pillows on my couch you know it's all creativity and I think that, you know, I always think about, gosh, what would the world be like if we didn't have creativity? If we were all like tapping into AI and, you know, <laughs> and just not trusting that spark, as my guest describes it. And I love that word, spark. If we didn't trust that spark, what would the world be like without creativity? You know, somebody had to create stop signs. Somebody had to create you know, programs on TV, it's all about creativity. So again, whether you know it or not, you are creative. And it's one of the most vital aspects of, oh, gosh, Andrew can't hear. Uh-oh, technical problems. That's not a good sign. <laughs> I'll just keep talking. Hopefully, Andrew will start to hear. Can you hear me now, Andrew? Yeah. I've got you now, Rose. Yes, and I just okay. Okay. Well, you missed my whole um, intro. But let me let me stop chatting for a minute here and um, just introduce you, our wonderful guest, and Jackie. You know, just feel free to join in and ask questions. We're going to just ask a bunch of questions to Andrew. Let me just explain who he is. Andrew Newman is a conscious children's book author, and he wrote writes the most amazing children's books it's hard to find conscious children's books really um but he did it and they're they're wonderful and he um let me just read all this he had this surprise discovery of his creativity as an adult and again he didn't believe he had a creative bone in his body and it just inspired him to use the act of creativity and getting in touch with the creative spark within as a healing for a lot of things, especially depression. Um, yeah. Interesting, because I know <laughs> back when I was an art major in college, I was depressed a lot. I didn't know what the heck I was doing in my life. And 
that was when I created my best, <laughs> my best art when I was <laughs> depressed. So that's an interesting concept too. Um, and I want to read something that he wrote that is, it's just so perfect. Where did I put it here? Uh, this is a quote from his upcoming book and that really jumped out at me. He said, it is a great paradox that in the depths of the dark aloneness of depression, you and I arrive into membership of one of the largest and fastest growing global tribes. And he calls the tribe the tribe of unexpressed spirits. We'll all, we are all card-carrying members of the tribe of unexpressed spirits, learning how to shift the atmosphere of global consciousness towards our birthright, the freedom of self-expression. Ah, that is so powerful, you know, and I find that when people stop themselves, whether it's their creative process or what they're here to teach or what they're here to understand or help people with kills us it really does it, it yeah. just stops our spirit it yeah. stops it in our tracks and it's just i think the saddest thing in the whole world and of course the remedy that andrew is um, presenting is getting in touch with your creativity trusting it taking action with it and doing something with it so with all of that andrew <laughs> welcome <laughs> Jackie and Jackie, we're thrilled that you're here. So let me yep. first of all ask you, you know, the burning question. How did you discover that you did have a creative bone or maybe lots of creative bones in, in your body? How did you access it? What Tell us that story. Uh, Royce, in, in my early 30s, I stumbled across first Reiki and then... Uh, the work of Dr. Barbara Brennan, which is a, she runs a school of energy healing. And uh, I went and signed up for the school because I, 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 when I went to the weekend workshop, I felt more seen and understood than I had ever been. And I, I showed up for this, this four year training with a whole lot of naivety about, uh, about uh, I was going to become a professional healer. And uh, and then one of the subjects was the creative arts curriculum. And, and the approach of it was to live with the attitude of an artist over the course of the year. And then once a year when we get together for, for, for school to, to kind of present what you'd, you'd created. And whether, the, whether it was a, a, an art piece that hung on a wall or whether it was something you performed or whatever it was, there was this aspect of creativity in the process whilst we were, you know, in other compartments we were studying our psychology, the childhood wounding that we had, the developmental traumas, um, <clears throat> and how to help uh, and learn to work with energy to help our clients. But this particular aspect of the curriculum was what uh, gave me the most freedom. And I felt like I'd, I would plug into a playground that I'd always wanted and never had. And mm. it, it was a little bit like a, like a, um, you know, a kindergarten I Stedford where, where, where the, there's people squawking out of tune on this instrument, but proudly, you know, and it was like and getting love for it. Nope. And it was such a restorative experience from, for my. You, you were freezing there, Andrew. That's okay. Would you mind repeating the last sentence of what you said? We were just saying that it was a good, a good nourishment for and an antidote for what I had experienced in my childhood. Yeah. I, was, I think many people ahead, have that experience. Yeah, yeah. What were you going to say, Jackie? That is a beautiful story. What a wonderful transition in your life and an opening up of new opportunities for you. And something that came to mind to me as an educator and, you know, a person that advocates for children is that you are trying to open up something that here in the United States, and I'm not sure how it is in the rest of the world, we don't promote the arts enough and we used to a lot more and then in the after the 60s and 70s they started not funding music programs and all these wonderful programs as much 
And something that I've noticed as a teacher for three decades is that children are feeling a lot of anxiety and restlessness at school. And I think one of the remedies could be just what you were saying. We need to bring the arts into the schools more and children benefit from art so much and from creativity. And your books are helping children to see their own creative side. Yeah, definitely. I, I so agree with you, Jackie. I, I truly don't believe I would have survived 18 years or 22 years of education without doing my art. It was that important to me. And I didn't know that when I, you know, <laughs> went into kindergarten until all of a sudden somebody handed me a paintbrush and I was doing these things and it was like, oh, oh I can do this and this feels so good and this is wonderful. And, you know, and then of course it shifted into, oh my God, how am I going to make money doing my art? I can't. There, you know, <laughs> the, the usual artistic dilemma right. of survival and being an artist. So, yeah. yeah. So, okay, my next question. And I want to pick up, Royce, you are 100% right. You, you are 100% right in saying this isn't just about having a paintbrush or an instrument in your hands. This is about um, how life works. Every breath goes through the same motion from, from, from uh, nothing to the arising impulse to the fullness and back down into the quietness. That's the cycle that creativity goes through. Um, and that the, that this kind of like creative spark moves through us in, and so whether it's it's preparing a meal or or planning your weekend, all of that is is an act of creation. You you you're in the process of creating your own life. Yes. Uh, and 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 I've heard this said, you know, by 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 the by the people who talk about manifestation and and perhaps some of the some of the, the spiritual teachers, but I haven't. To me, it's been aloof. I haven't been able to bring it down. And to really see the mechanism, uh, and this is what I, which which is one of the reasons why I started exploring this so deeply, because I like I want to understand this thing. Yeah, yeah. So what is, what do you think that spark really is? Is it something external that gets thrown on us, or something that's triggered inside of us? Is it a spiritual thing? How would you define spark? I'm going to define it in this moment. So I know I've written a definition, but in this moment, as I sit here with you and I kind of look inwards for this answer, the answer arises from somewhere. Yes. And, 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 and this is the nature of the spark. It's, it, it, it's a, a, a movement from the, the, the big divine, the, the, the totally impersonal oneness of divine everything, into me where it becomes my voice my words my ideas my sharing um and so it's a process that is happening and it's the uh the arrival of an impulse uh of of divine light really that's moving through yes yes absolutely and i always try to explain that to people in my in my classes that it's funny, I, I learned, I, I started teaching my spiritual program about over four decades ago. And <clears throat> the first few months of doing it, I had no idea what was going to come out of my mouth. You know, people would ask a question and I'd think, I, I, I don't know, who knows? And then out of my mouth would come an answer. And that's part of the creative process too. It's like receiving something and getting it out there, knowing what to do with it, knowing what to say, knowing how to take that paintbrush and color to choose. And yeah, and I think when we mix it too much with our logical mind, it really stops it, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> One of my closest friends is a, a very successful artist and he just lets it flow. And if you were to ask him, well, what are you going to do there? He has no idea until it arrives. So yeah, it's, it's really about trusting. Yeah. I um, noticed that with children too, that um, I feel like schools have become sort of unifocused just on academics in a lot of ways. And I can see the 
effect on them that they're not allowed to just freely think or freely express because there's so much expectation to sit at a desk for most hours of the day there and do yeah. academic work. So creativity is really needed for kids a lot more. Yeah. Definitely. So you talk a lot in your book or your upcoming book about um, trauma and creativity. How does trauma impact creativity and how can it basically heal it or get past it through allowing the creativity to flourish? Talk about that. Yeah, so, so trauma sets up protection. It, our safety system closes ourselves down our freedom of self-expression gets uh, limited in an attempt to keep you were going in and out andrew <laughs> You, we heard everything. Up yeah, to, I just wanted to wanted to catch up, see what you quote there. Yeah, up to in an in a, an attempt. Yes. We, right after that, we couldn't hear you. Yes, in an in an attempt to keep us safe. It's it's it, 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 our safety system then, but our safety system then gets habituated in a certain way, and 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 it's it essentially oppresses our our individuality and our own uh, freedom uh, to be ourselves. Uh, and so we have to we have to do the work of of resolving that. And there's there's seven different doorways that you can go through. We we know you can go through trauma work and you can go through the work of therapy. We also know it's hard work, um, it's expensive work, uh, and it's painful work, because yeah. you can, as an alternative, go through the doorway of creativity and reinstate the flow that got blocked in the first place. And the freedom that got blocked in the first place, and 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 we do that by 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 falling into our creative practice, whatever that practice might be for us, uh, that it it can then then reconnect us to that. The life before the trauma uh, was was uninhibited, was free flowing, was expressive, uh, and 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 even if you do a, a whole lot of work on the trauma and understanding what happened to you and understanding why you closed down, understanding uh, how you limit yourself and what the patterns are, you still have to then go out and live and you've got to get yeah. into the world and you've got to express yourself. And so you're going to be using your creativity to do that uh, one way or another. I'm just suggesting, let's put it right at the front as, as, as a way of being. Yeah. It almost feels like when we do that, no matter what age we are, as you are doing now in your life as a man in, his, in the middle of his thriving life, using your creativity to express yourself and perhaps release past moments that didn't feel so great. I feel like that is such a wonderful, simple healing remedy for all of us to help ourselves feel better. It's such a natural, simple way to release pain or suffering or past moments that made us feel less than comfortable. It's It, it almost feels like it just kind of channels through you to release physically that energy that's in you. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> just on a, a little bit of a different note, um, my husband suffered a stroke about 10 years ago and he was at a rehab hospital where they offered art classes and he enrolled in one of the art classes. And at first he couldn't, you know, cause his brain was still adjusting to this, you know, new way of understanding things and he couldn't do anything. He couldn't even pick up the brush to do anything. And then in about six months, he started creating these, masterpieces of art and his work now is in a gallery and he is part of a group of artists at this rehab hospital that um, well they don't anymore but they used to meet weekly and have a professional artist teach them stuff and you could see the the joy and the release and the um 
the beauty that would pour out of them was just phenomenal. And some of these people couldn't talk. Some of them couldn't use their hands. They were you know, tied their hands to a paintbrush so they could use a crutch. I mean, you name it. They had so many physical challenges to do this, but they came up with these things that were just phenomenal, just phenomenal. So next question that I have for you is how does the spark of creativity help us with depression? I was mentioning before that my best work came out of my depression as an artist, but how, did, how does getting in touch with and expressing ourselves help with the issue of depression that so many people are suffering from lately? Uh oh, I hope he's not. I feel like Andrew might be frozen. So he's frozen. I can respond for a moment and see if okay. he can back in. Um, I can see so much through children and through listening to Andrew shares. Oh, there he is. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. Did you hear my question, Andrew? <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, okay. Depression. And, yes, absolutely. About depression. And, Yes, absolutely. Look at the, the origins of depression. And uh, and for me, that's again a reevaluation going back to this. How how is my expression of self being stopped? Where's my where's my yeah. freedom and my confidence that I can go out into the world and I can express myself? I'm going to be received, I'm going to be wanted here in the world. I actually belong here. I'm on the right planet. Um and <laughs> Uh, uh, and so much, and so much of of our experience then says, no, 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 you're you're not wanted here. You, you don't belong here. You're actually not safe here. Um, and there's a bottling inside of this our soul nature, our spiritual self. It just wants to be want to be here to express ourselves, and now we can't. Of course, we're going to feel depressed. Of course. Um, but, <clears throat> that's, that's the recipe, sure, fire recipe for depression. And that's, that's only on a personal level. We start stacking uh, a personal level into our societies. Uh, we start seeing uh, societal depression and oppression. I mean, think about, I, I grew up in apartheid South Africa. So, so the, there was just this, this blanket thrown over any person of color that says you're not allowed to whatever it is. And, and of, of course, it sets up a, a response. And in that case, um uh, uh our health our health uh, reacts to it so yeah. there's a dilemma here which is uh jacqueline were you talking as as we start to express ourselves <laughs> the first thing that happens is we we bump up against our safety system that was that was it's an old program it was written a long time ago we go i'm here well i've got a great new idea and yeah. the safety system goes, oh, I'm not so sure about that because, uh, because my job is to keep you safe. And the last time you did this, it didn't work out for you. So, so uh, the act of creative self-expression is, in fact, rebellious. It's, a, it's, an, it, it's, it's activism against your old yeah. narrative. Uh, yeah. and, and it brings up the challenge. And you say, so you Yeah, okay. we heard up to the word challenge. Yes. We heard the word challenge. What did you say right after challenge? Technology is a challenge. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, just to yeah. uh, go ahead. Well, it's, I mean, I want to I want to be cheeky and draw the parallel here. This is what it's like. We're trying to express ourselves and we can't quite get it out. It's like it's just yeah. like this moment where the technology is limiting yeah. the bandwidth for us. Constantly being frozen. Yeah. As you're speaking, I was thinking about how we use the art so much to express so much pain and suffering we've been through as a human race. You know, like maybe thinking of mm -hmm. memorials that have been erected in statues or murals in honor of some tragedy or you know a war or different things and how much we use that to express standing up for civil rights or standing up for oppression as you were saying and creativity is such a wonderful way to rebel in a safe way and it helps us to 
release again the stuck energy like i was saying before of the human experience of negative aspects of how we are experiencing things and then on the other hand of course it helps us express wonderful experiences we have like poetry when you think of love poems or lyrics of a love song mm -hmm. so creativity comes in so many forms for us it's such an important aspect of us really healing ourselves yeah it's interesting when you were talking jackie i was thinking about people that create films i, I never thought of that in terms of it yeah. being rebellion but when people create a film that show us what really happened, for example, what was war really like? You know, we didn't know what it was like until we saw things that showed us the, the real truth of war. So, yeah, it really is rebellious. Yeah. 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 And unless you were there, of course, <laughs> they right. really had it firsthand. But, um, yeah, it's something too that we can experience that we wouldn't understand otherwise like mm -hmm. the Selma Bridge march that ended in police violence against the protesters we wouldn't understand that the same had we not seen this movie portraying these actual tragic events yeah so Andrew mm -hmm. I think you're really on to something here with your book and help having us take this spark of energy, whatever kind of energy it is, and helping it release and heal by using it in a way to express ourselves. Definitely. So why don't we take a brief break and we will be right back with Andrew Newman and I'm gonna ask him about some of the techniques that he uses to unblock creativity and to get in touch with it because I'm sure there's all kinds of fascinating things that you've discovered and we'll be right back Times TV. Do you crave joy but feel stuck? Do you go through life feeling constantly triggered and frustrated? Fear is likely the culprit, and subconscious fear is likely sabotaging you. Perfect Life Awakening is a time-tested, spiritually-based approach to inner transformation created by Royce Morales. For over 40 years, she has helped people get to the origins of subconscious fears and ultimately help them find their true purpose and a life full of joy. Sign up for Perfect Life Awakening today at RoyceMorales.com. You deserve to go from triggered to empowered, shifting your life with Perfect Life Awakening. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Own Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Own Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Own Times. Open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. I am talking with Andrew Newman, who is the author of the upcoming book, <sighs> Follow Your Spark, Not Your Trauma. That is just the best title. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So... Let's talk a little bit before we get into some of your exercises that you, um, some practical steps that people can take. 
what is it that really blocks us? I mean, besides the standard, you know, whatever, just talk a little bit about what blocks people from their creativity. Well, we have to talk about the sequence of steps that come okay. into the creative process. So when, when the spark emerges into us as this creative impulse, as shared already, the safety system is the first thing that kicks in. Right. At that point, we've got a, 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 some discernment to do, and we've got to make a choice about daring to go forward. We have to commit. It's fairly impersonal if you think about it. It's, it arrives as an idea. Hey, I'd like to do this. And, and, and the idea can go away again. But we have to make it personal. It's something that we'll take an ownership of. But then the moment we want to actually take steps in the world, that's a big leap. It's a threshold that takes it from the, the dream world of our interior into the reality of the physical world. Um, and uh, that's where hesitation and ambivalence and reassessment and constant reassessment, you know, those sort of things come in because we're trying to now predict the future. Our, our anxious self looks forward. It's, we're trying to imagine how this is going to work out for us. Uh, and 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 still at a later stage, the world's going to give us feedback and mirror us. And sometimes if you've had a bad experience of feedback and you're not used to receiving it or you can't discern um, yourself from the other in that moment, which is really a boundaries violation at a young age that would lead to something like that, then again, you, you know, why would you put something else? You actually don't want anybody to come and give you give you that level of feedback. Um so these are things that we're just, we're just going to have to face at every stage. And so there's plenty of places where, where we can get hijacked and that this can get ambushed in our, in our attempt to express. And for, for each person, it's a little bit different. Some people we kind of, we, we're like, like, some people don't want to do the reflections towards the end of this, the, 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 the self-expression process. We have to slow down. We have to review what we've done. And if we don't do that, uh, as a step, we, we we keep we keep recreating new things, recreating new things, recreating new things, but we don't get the full satisfaction of what it is that we've been putting out into the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what about the whole idea of doing something without expectation? In other words, I'm going to create this beautiful painting, and I don't care if anybody sees it. I don't care if it, if it ever sells. It could land in my basement, and it doesn't matter how. Do you talk about that in your book at all? Well, yes, it's very much why the title of the book is is Follow Your Spark, because that's all I did. There's a there was a moment back in 2010 when I sat down on a sidewalk in Scotland and I begged for poetry for the people of Haiti. And it was just after the Haiti earthquake. Now, all I had, I had this little bubbling impulse inside me. I mean, I, I thought I was, I thought it felt great. It felt enlivening. It also seemed a little bit silly. It seemed kind of risky and, and I still followed it. And I, I sat down on that sidewalk, not knowing what would happen. I put out a sign, I put out my hat and I said, donate a poem. And, and then I had, and then I waited, right? I waited and I, and I had to feel all these feelings and what was going to happen. So the first person who came past laughed at me and kept going, but he put a pound in the hat. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, I made some money. That's not the worst result. <laughs> the, the second couple to come past me put, put money in the hat and she wrote me this, this, this first donated poem. And then the third person to come and speak to me was a police officer. Who, who asked me for my license. <laughs> and, and there I was, I was in it. I was in the unfolding moment of, of just following this little impulse, not knowing where it would take me. I didn't know I'd get 68 poems that day. I didn't know that that the next day I would I would wake up going, I'm off poem catching and think, oh, I need I need a URL. I, I, I didn't know that that I would sell 21 copies of a book that didn't exist, which meant I had to make it, okay? And, and, and I didn't know that one of the people who 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 was was writing me a poem turned out to be the mayoress in the village, and she chose to present her book to Prince Charles. Wow! So, wow! <laughs> wonderful! All I did was say yes to that spark, and then continue to say yes. And it was an act of trust. I won't say that I had confidence. Confidence came. Um, and 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 later I went on. I've I've had it two and a half thousand poems written for me at different different events around the world now, and uh, and and this is my belief that 
that everybody has a creative spark because I've seen it. I've seen, yeah. I've, I've literally witnessed it. Um, and, and I love that the freedom of, of creating when you don't know why you're creating or where you're doing it and you're not monetizing yeah. it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's where pleasure really lives. And if you can allow yourself to go to that, then it's, it's, it's nourishment and it's healing. That yeah. is an amazing story. <laughs> you just gave me chills. I want to cry. Oh, amazing. Really I have amazing. to say that I have those sparks of thoughts like, oh, I should do this. And I really get excited. And then I don't act on them. Ooh, and yeah, you just yeah, inspired yeah. me so much to because I know there's a reason I'm thinking those things. Yeah. And Andrew, that was a very inspirational, simple story that you channeled this important message from some higher spirit, really. And look yeah. what's come of it. It's turned into a whole book series. Yeah. 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 Wow. Congratulations. It's, you yeah. listen to your spark. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. One, one book at a time, right? So on the kids' books, the first book was just a poem that needed some pictures. And, and all I did was go, oh, obvi obviously we're going to make it and then and then make it. Um, and it was three or four years later before I wrote another poem that I thought, oh, oh, this one needs some pictures as well. And, and so they, they came to me more than I me going off looking for them. And it's, again, each was an act of me following this this arising impulse. Uh, and, and and then later when, you know, turning to monetize it into a business. Now, that's a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. That's a, it's. <laughs> It's 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 not as much fun. I can tell you that much. But it's yeah. but it, it's uh, um, it felt like again there was a deeper level of trust that now I could look at these collection of little sparks, going oh there's a story there's a story there's another story. Wait wait something bigger is happening. And 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 it was it, it if you were using the metaphor of fire and spark, it's like oh this is the flame. We, we've seen a couple of the sparks come off, but there's, there's a flame beneath it and it's still burning. So, yeah. so let me, let me connect to that now. And you know, they say fire releases um, energy in the soils and the plants and things around to help them grow, not the wildfires that are being caused by climate change. That's something else, but natural fires from lightning and all those different things that have happened over the millennia hmm. that seeds basically. And that's what you're doing is planting seeds of helping children to process how to be a better human, how to be a better citizen and help our, our race evolve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. that's what we're here to do. That's, that's literally what we're here to do. We, we, we're here to expand our consciousness. We're here to bring in the new, that's what the creative process is it's it's coming from this unmanifest into the manifest into the, the from the impersonal into the personal and coming into the world and that evolves our consciousness individually and collectively um you read something that i wrote in my book um royce I, i've never had that thought prior to writing it i wrote it and then when you read it back to me i'm like huh <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's quite well said. You know? <laughs> it, it's like this: we get the paintbrush, we get the brush stroke. We don't know where the brush is going. Um, all of those people who wrote poems for me on the streets, they didn't know what they were going to write. Maybe you just get the first glimpse of the first word, and and you dare to put that down on the page, and the next word reveals itself, and then the next, and and and, and there it is. It's your unfolding of who you are yeah. as an evolutionary process. Yeah. I just want to share something. It keeps coming to mind as you're talking, a personal experience I had where um, I, I teach spirituality and I teach trusting your in, intuition and getting messages from spirit. I was meditating one day and I was told, <laughs> and when I get told these things, I have to listen. I was told you need to write a book. And I'm like, I'm not a writer. I don't have a writing ability. It just sounds like, you know, no creative bone in my body, mm -hmm. no writer mm -hmm. bone in my body. <laughs> <laughs> so I forced myself, because I do trust when I get those things, I forced myself to sit down and start writing a book about an experience I was having. And every time I would sit down, it was like torture. You know, I couldn't get the words out. Or I couldn't even get myself to sit down and start writing. 
finally, at one point, I just said, forget it. I'm just not going to do this. And, you know, all of a sudden, I had these excruciating pains in my hands. Hmm. And I wow. thought, what the hell? <laughs> and I asked in meditation, what are those pains in my hands about? And it said, it's because you're not writing. And I'm thinking, I can't even type. It hurts so bad. And wow. it said, sit down and start writing. And I sat down and guess what? The pain went away. Yeah. You, 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 this, is, this is what we need to know about health. You're yeah. talking about what blocked yeah. up flow feels like. And, and, and when it's direct pain like this and it's, and it's causal like this, it's so, it's so useful. But when, when, when you're dealing with complex physical stuff in the body and we're trying to solve it through a medical lens, and we forget about the fact that we're spiritual beings that are here to express mm -hmm. ourselves and we're not doing it, of course we've got this pain coming up in the body. Of course, yeah. Well, it's like what Roy says, when you push something down it comes and up. you don't acknowledge it or take care of it or you know, work with it, all the ways that you could handle something that comes up, it's gonna come up another way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep reminding you, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And mm -hmm. wow, what a great story again about listening to your intuition. Yep, yep. Got but that it. first, that first voice, Royce. I'm not that a writer. First voice. So, so when I was when I but when I was asking all those poets, those people walking past, I'm saying, "Hey, want to write a poem?" I'm a scientist. Scientists don't write poems. I don't. You know, I haven't written a <laughs> poem since I was since I was twelve. You know, yeah. I, I I can't. I can't. I can't. Now those little voices, um, again, they're protective. They're, 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 we can't chase them away because we've got nowhere to go. We have to do the opposite and bring them in close and, and recognize this part of the safety system again. Just acknowledge them. Go, hey, guys, love that you're here. So glad that you're here. But now let's get you in the back seat of the car. Put your seatbelt on. You can chat away as much as you want, but, but dad's driving. Okay. And, <laughs> and it's a very helpful metaphor because it, it, it also gives a, a, a geographic orientation that you put these things behind you and yeah. you focus on where you're going. You want to look out into the world. Um, then you, then you, you can get to where you want to, want to be with, with them. They come with the voices are always going to be there. This was one of the things for me 20 years later in therapy. I still have these voices coming up. 25 kids books yeah. I've written. I've still got these voices. So if we take it as the as our responsibility to slay the voices, we're in trouble because we'll spend all of our energy in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. If we take it as our, our intention to go to where it is we're, we're being led uh, and to steer our spark and follow it at the same time to where we're going, um, yeah. then we can actually get there. Yeah. I always, I, if I ever have those voices, I'll say, oh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> Pat them on the head. Thank you. Thanks. I hear you. you. Get in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So tell us, you have, a, you have a lot of techniques and practices that are going to be in this upcoming book. Can you share a couple of these to help our, our audience access their creativity and trust it and go for it? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, one of the most helpful things, just in line with what we're talking about, and it's so straightforward. Get yourself a post-it. Write down the voices that are showing up as you start a, starting a task. You're thinking of starting a task. Just write the voices down, and 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 again, stick them on on onto that post-it in front of you somewhere so that you can see them. It it lets it, lets them come out of the miasma of the cloud, and it lets you discern whether or not that's you or the voice. And it gives you this opportunity with that discernment to then uh, to then come back into your your self authority to move to move forward to what you want to do. Um, the the other is to play. The spirit of play is is very very helpful here uh, because uh, 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 the vibrancy of that young spark it it is playful. It's emergent. It wants to wants to go and explore the world, um, and so. If you're not surrounded by people who are playing, then then f go go look for that. Um, it's one of the reasons why I have a I have a, a free creativity huddle. We get together on on Mondays and it we check in, we meditate, we create, we celebrate, and we check out. And it's just it's about not being alone with this idea of wanting to do something, and then at the same time having some sort of a 
a body buddy to support because it, you, we can uh, we certainly anyone who's got a, a, a half an ounce of ADHD is is prone to get distracted and to go off in a different direction. Um, and so we want to create the community of play around that. In the in in the book and 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 some of the material I'm developing now includes meditative guided meditations. Um, this is built on my my understanding of the human um, human energy field and yeah. and the way that this this energy it's a sp it, energy that's why I say spark a spark of energy comes into our being and moves us um, and we can learn to invite that forward and welcome it forward and anticipate it and expect it and then. Uh, and then it becomes more normal. It becomes more normal. It becomes no, no, more normal. You you grow into the confidence that you're allowed to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a habit. You form a, a new habit, a new commitment to yourself. It's kind of like a self care, right? Yeah. Taking care mm -hmm. of yourself and expressing yourself and getting it out and healing yourself and enjoying it, enjoying the moment, enjoying life, enjoying being creative, and listening mm -hmm. to those sparks come through. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah. a neural pathway. Yeah, it is. Very yeah. well said. Yeah. And even, in tra even as you're talking, I'm thinking about how um, we're kind of trained to not express yeah. ourselves verbally. You know, we're trained, oh, you know, don't say that to somebody. You shouldn't talk like that to somebody. Don't express your fears or your buttons or whatever it is we're, we're taught that from day don't one don't cry don't cry don't, don't cry. Cry. yeah don't feel yeah <laughs> and i find that you know in my courses I, I encourage people and teach people the importance of getting just getting it out there you know and how freedom results from that so if i'm angry at my husband for something that he did and i'm holding it in you know, he's going to be the other side of my, my mirror showing me that I'm holding something in. And all I need to do is just go, you know, it really pissed me off when you did blah, blah, blah. And I feel better. He feels better, you know, and of course, say it in a responsible way. But the same thing is true about creativity. If we're, we're holding on to all of this stuff, you know, and it's just eating us alive or causing our fingers to hurt or, you know, whatever it is that causes. So... Yeah. When you're talking about being seen, right, this is a central aspect to our humanity is that we we actually want to be seen. Um, and depending on how we were seen in the past depends on how good we are when somebody shows up to really see us. But but the, the, that little moment, what a beautiful example. You're holding something. The moment it comes out, you say, hey, I didn't like it when you. Um, and now, now your experience is being seen and known, and it's this opportunity to um, opportunity for connection is what arises through this. So, uh, what what I saw with all the poetry is, uh, and I'm not, I'm certainly not the first to say this, but like joy wants to be shared. It's yes. an emotion that we want to share. I smile, you smile, we laugh, we do it together. You know. Um, the sadness and 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 anger, and that often often is is more attractive than that. Um, but either way, the expression can lead to a possibility of connection that isn't yet happening, and that isn't that is nourishing for us in in, in the deepest way. Mm -hmm. Validated without being seen, we can't be validated for who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And since I always see things in the bigger picture, <laughs> I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, God. What an amazing world that would create, you know, if people just trusted their in, their their intuition and expressed themselves, took responsibility, you know, uh, got it out there in some way. That would be a healing for this world. I re I really believe that. How do you feel about that in terms of the bigger picture? Absolutely. Like in the same way I said, personal, local, global. This is yeah. this is we we start doing it right here. We have this conversation. I share something about something quirky I did in Scotland 10 years ago. Jacqueline gets off the call and goes and writes a poem. She then shares it with uh, with uh, her friend. And the next thing you know, there's this, the, the ripple of yes. um, of essentially, and we, we, you know, in, in, in our audience, the ripple of light. This is what we're talking about. That, mm -hmm. that, that comes out and through us and goes out into the world. Yeah. I was just thinking about a wonderful story that I heard from, 
a woman I'd been working with and she had gotten pregnant at in her 40s and was so excited for the first time. And unfortunately, she ended up miscarrying the baby in the first trimester. And she was so hurt and devastated and just sad. But she realized through a process now of it's been 10 or so years since that happened, that she was actually birthing a business that she created. And oh, the business wow. has grown. And she calls the business Sophia business or whatever. Mm. It's like, and which was mm. the name of this daughter that was potentially going to be her human form daughter, but wow. turned into a business. Mm. And how she channeled that energy, that spark of sadness, right? It was a different kind of a spark and yeah. intuited that she was supposed to be birthing something different than a baby, a human baby. It was something mm. else, but she created it anyway. And it was, and it's amazing and it's continuing to grow. Wow, that's amazing. So I know Andrew offer um, private work with people to help their creativity. Tell us a little bit about what you offer. Uh, yes, Royce, I, I love working with folks one-on-one -on -one, uh, in order to help help steer through some of the um, some of the psychological material that that will come up in the process of trying to move forward. I'm interested in doing both the psychological work and the forward-facing work. So it's a little back, looking backwards to move forwards, you know, and moving forwards to heal backwards. Um, and uh, at the same time, I, the, the group environment does something that that one-on-one -on -one work can't do. And so I have, and and this is emergent, right? I'm creating all the time. So one of the things we've created is a, a program for people who want to write conscious kids books. And we have a small group that that works there. Uh, another program that has um, uh, has run was a 72-hour creativity challenge that just got us into the room and stirring these juices. Um, and then that led into a six-month container where folks were saying, this is what I want to do in the next six months. I don't trust myself to get to the end point um, because I've had this dream for a long time, but I keep putting the dream down. Um, I, wanted, I want to be in a place where uh, I have the support. And again, it's if this if this is the right narrative then you're going yes this feels right to me i i, I want to get past my psychological stuff i don't want to be digging in it too much i want to be getting to where i want to get to yeah. um and and so i don't actually know what i'm going to create next of course how could i i haven't i haven't done it but i'm prepared to go onto that edge and go huh look at that what mm. i didn't know i was going to write write uh, this book um, and it, it, it's, it's been a clear journey of, of doing workshops and trying to find the right language and, and meeting people, having these conversations, doing more deep listening, reflecting on those years po of poetry and poem catching. Um, and I'm excited. And spring, spring 25, we'll have, a, we'll have a, new, a new book in the world. Awesome. So follow your spark, not your trauma. That's so awesome. And so how do people get in touch with you? Uh, well, a, a couple of ways. Um, uh, I'm Conscious Stories is always there in the kids' book business, so ConsciousStories.com. Uh, and then for if you're interested in the uh, the creativity focused processes, is uh, Training.AndrewNewman.Me mm -hmm. is the is the handle on that. Um, and Royce, I mean, it just as I know we're wrapping up here, the, the one thing I would say is if you're coming out of a therapy session, if you're coming out of a workshop, if you've done the deep vulnerable work of going into the space um, that's opened you up, please go and do something creative in that moment. It's essential that you fill the, the spaces you've just vacated with your own new vibrant essence. And that's the right moment to really, really jump in, get the clay out or the paintbrush out. Yeah, that's awesome. Or get a different hairstyle or a different outfit. <laughs> it's, you know, yeah. something that's creative to you. That's so great. That's so great. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate you being here. And thank you, Jackie, for your amazing questions as always. Mm -hmm. And just to remind everybody that my next show next Wednesday is all about mirrors. And I'm going to be talking to somebody who is talking about motivation so he's a businessman who does a lot of work with mirrors and motivates people. He's a personal trainer and he, we're just going to 
talk all about how, you know why how do we motivate people so and that's what you're doing andrew and i think that's just mm. delightful and wonderful yeah awesome. and thank you so much i hope i see everybody next wednesday same time and you just keep on doing what you're doing andrew keep up the good work wonderful Jackie, I thank expect you so much poem. <laughs> I'll send my poem right away. Yes. Yeah, include include the word spark. There'll be some <laughs> yes. spark poetry in the world. Yes. Maybe that's a good title. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Have you. Have a wonderful guys. day. Thank Howdy. you. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.